Oh my god. We're there. We're there. Hopefully, hopefully this stays and the audio works and the audio's fine and all of that as well. Sorry about that, guys. That was uh, interesting. <laughs> Can you hear all of us? Okay. Can you hear everyone? I don't know why my, my TV's over there. I keep on telling them this. My TV's over there and I have the stream on it, so I answer the questions. But I've also got a tablet there with everything on it, so I can, if there are any questions or anything needs changing, it's right in front of me, but I'm always looking over there. Uh, turn you up a smidge. Sure. No, sorry, right. I've done it. It's right, I've done it. It should be better. So, what are we doing? <laughs> Just chatting, apparently. I've forgotten already. Um, after, so after I've done punching <laughs> tech and rage, rage. Ah, oh, don't. I love. That's one of my favourite sayings from Big Mouth. That bit. Have you seen Big Mouth? I have not seen any Big Mouth. You should. You should. I'm, you, I'm woefully behind on a lot of TV. It's so funny. It's um, the hormone monster. It's just rage, rage, fucking rage. And it's brilliant. It's one of my favourite things. So there's been a lot of uh, talking about yeah, vigilance, loyalty and stuff like that at the moment. Sounds like someone forgot what loyalty means. <laughs> uh, so, LARP, apparently, I believe. Maybe, potentially. What? What? <sighs> Fuck knows right now. Um, so... So before before we did this about an hour or so ago, we did a little uh, recording for a little project I'm working on. For and which, by the way, the tech worked fine. It worked amazingly well. <laughs> um, so we're so we've been doing that, which has been a good laugh. And yeah, ooh, LARP, Helen says, and um, it was it 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 it's, it brought it. It's brought something up to me that uh, has been brought up in a lot of these chats. And it's something I thought I'd start with because it's something that is, um, I think it's something that happened that we, we, we chatted about it. It's something that happens to everybody. And it's something that if you, when you, what, uh, you are able to bring yourself out of it as well. So when the, so it was one of the things when we were talking about um, when you had in a bit of a funk, you get into a bit of a into that sort of moment, and then it's doing something to bring yourself out of it. So it's like yeah. it's LARP blues halfway through the event, sort of. Yeah, all right. Which is a nice way of putting it. I think in my case, it was having a bit of a strop and going off in a bit of a bit of a paddy. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, it, it's exceptionally rare that I ever get that, but there was so there was one case. And the, the example of what we were talking about was um, an event. I want to say about two years ago. It was E one. Hmm. Um, was it our first event? No, it wasn't the first event in the new field setup. But it was. I think it was our second year with the new field setup with Wintermark um, and, and Don over, over in the new field hmm. and. Uh, got there nice and early, like a day early. Um, we're like, come on, let's go down Thursday night. It'll be great. We'll have drinks. We'll set up the marquee. It'll be wonderful fun. We did that. And I somehow had managed to misplace a rather significant part of the tent towards the center pole, which was um, kind of key to putting the marquee up. Um, so the entire weekend was off to a rotten start right there. Um, the mud was being terrible. I think this was this was one of the, the terrible, terrible mud fests. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to choose from. Um, so that put me in a strop straight away. Uh, I'd spent all the day I was planning on being relaxing, just kind of running backwards and forwards between Cambridge and the site. Um, what I will say is myself and my whole mates managed to bodge together the most monstrous and yet effective um, tent centre pole you've ever seen. It was horrific. It was just two poles slobbed together, a bunch of other things braced around it, like the, the axe and the fashions symbol, but that holding up our entire marquee. And the best thing is we used that for another year and a half. That's engineering. Um, but well. yeah, so that started off. We were tired and exhausted. And then mm. I think it was the Saturday night I'd gone up and I was playing in the league theatre. Um, I had a really good night. 
won a very large bottle of Prosecco, um, which was really cool. Um, and then I came back to the tent, and by that point, I was I was tired. I think I'd probably been fighting that day as well. Um, and and this was around the time. Um, I won't go into that, but yeah, it was the Ashen Hall tent was was rammed, um, yeah. as was the case. It was reaching a certain point where the tent was being rammed on a fairly regular basis for reasons. Um, and I got back to the tent, and all I really wanted was just to sit down and chill and have some quiet headspace time. Mm. Um, and there was a load of people there, and they were laughing and smiling and singing, having a great time. And I was not interested in any, any of that. Bastards. Um, Bastards, yeah, how dare they? <laughs> and there's, that, there's that little part of me inside going, um, it's like, on the one hand, I'm really happy that people have literally found some shelter from the storm in our tent, and they're able to use it, the warmth of our fire to have a good time, and that's great. On the other hand, oh, God. but I didn't want to do that, because it was, it was a lot of friends, it was a lot of people who we know and like as well. But I just, my uh, my social meter had maxed out. My, I, need, I need some some me time. Um, so I did the only sensible thing was I left a small group of people at our tent and I went to a much bigger group of people without any cover around a bigger fire. So I ended up buggering off to song and story time, which you'd think would be the worst place to go when you're done with people, you don't want to socialize and you just want some downtime. But one of the things I love with song and story time is you can just turn up and, and I just loitered at the back. And it was wonderful because I was just able to just absorb it passively, um, and it was it was really nice. Just kind of being able to chill, <clears throat> step back. So because of obviously being a performer and doing stuff at the league and, and one thing or another, I kind of been on the front line and been very invisible all day. And I just needed some some non visibility that time. Um, I think even when Nem clocked me, she's like, "You're gonna sing." I was like, "Time out yeah. <laughs> for me. Time out." But then it was great. I was able to get my chill back. I was able to get my enthusiasm back. Uh, I ended up getting up and doing a song as well, which I didn't think I was going to be in the mood for. Um, and I think I think that was the reason I'd always liked song and story time. But that was for me was the moment where it's like, no, this is this has medicinal purposes. This has yeah. actually helped to save my event and make me love the game again. Um, yeah, and that was. That was hard, and it, it can be hard with things like that, especially when the weather's against you. Um, I think it was after that event that I ended up writing like a ten-page thesis on how to survive. Like I wrote my o OC survival guide, which largely involved bring fucking wellies. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, rem I remember. I remember that event really well as we were as we were chatting about. Uh, Sam's said uh, he's had that done as well. He sold a tent before an event. Uh, he forgot a pole for it at home, and bod the bodging it was disgusting. Yeah, so I, we still don't we still don't know where the pole ended up. I, I really? drove home from the site to Cambridge. I remember you drove home. Find yeah. it in the garage. I can only assume it got left on site the previous time that, that everything had been put down. Um, but yeah, we we had that horrible bodge effect for a good year, maybe a year and a half. After that, we eventually got some scaffolding and a full brace. Um, yeah, and we've got engineers in our group. We have people who are exceptionally good at the crafting things, but I still think that bodge job was one of our proudest achievements. I think especially the thing that really sold it for me was um, <laughs> some myself, and I, I can be a bit of a cowboy with things like that. and like, oh, I know it's not entirely safe, but go, oh, it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Paul, who plays Algar, um, he is he's very methodical. He's got a real engineer's mind on a lot of this stuff. Um, mm. And whereas I can cowboy certain things, he can sometimes over-engineer certain things. Yeah. And I knew it was a success at the point when both of us just kind of stood back, folded our arms and were like, oh, that's a good job, that. <laughs> and, and the point when we can both agree on it, that's that's a real testament yeah. to an excellent bodge job. So the funny thing is, is that you, I remember you turning up and everything not there and then you leaving again. And then coming back the following day with everything all the way from Cambridge. The funny thing about all of that is that you still got there before Smith trot on Humes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So yeah. be proud of that one. <laughs> so I mean, one of the things that I like to do, what I like doing about this is that because obviously I know everyone who's on this. I know everyone from Empire and things, and we sit down, we chill, we chat. 
Um, I'd like to try to find out a little bit more about it all. So your first bit of role play experience in the world, what was it? What was that? Was it like, because a lot of people have gone from like D&D and all of those sorts of... So as in, as in, as in the in, real world? In the real world, yeah. Um, so in terms of role play, it will have been D&D. &D. Um, well, so it's a bit weird. So my, my background is theatre and acting and performance. I would which have never a guess. I know. Never a guess. It, <laughs> so that's just scripted role play, really. So I, I kind of view a lot of this role play stuff as just elaborate improv with better costumes and sets. Um, so I, I do a lot of like theatre-based stuff. Um, so I'm used to that, but in terms of role play, I I grew up painting small, expensive soldiers. Um, I paid vast amounts to Games Workshop over the years. Um, in fact, look what lockdown has wrought upon me. I started picking them up again. This is this is what lockdown's done. Oh dear. Um, but I, I, none of my group when we were younger, we'd do the wargaming. None of them were into D and D or anything like that. Bunch of nerds. Nothing, nothing like D and D, and then it was when I will have been in my mid twenties, and I was Couple working at a games company. <laughs> Absolutely, um, yeah, <laughs> working in a at a video games company, surrounded by a bunch of nerds, and one of the guys on my team was uh, was this nerd called Mark Mark Humes, I think it was. You know him from somewhere. Um, Never heard and, of him. Yeah, and he was running a game of D and D with a bunch of the other people on the team, and um, and I I, I kind of listened in and I thought D and D bunch of nerds, um, while I painted small plastic soldiers and worked for a video game company, um, but then I'd listen to these stories and they were funny, and I because I I'd, I'd, I'd never played D and D or anything like that, so listen to these guys tell these stories, these anecdotes as if they were there, um. And hearing how funny and absurd they were, I was like, actually sounds kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, then Mark kicked off a new campaign. Uh, I ended up joining that. So he was he was my first aim. He was the guy who taught me how to play D and D. But that was yeah, that was in my mid twenties. Um, yeah, and that was even then. That would be another ten years after that before. I'd, uh, I'd actually move into the field and, and start laughing or anything. And that was mm. only after a lot of persuasion and, and peer pressure from other people. Yeah, because you were you were saying earlier that it was uh, Oz and uh, John and people just getting in yeah. touch with you and putting a bit of, bit of bullying and peer pressure. Yeah, so Oz was one of those, the, the players in that group, because we all knew each other from the games company. Ah. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he he'd been trying to convince me for a little while because I knew I knew um, Mark had done uh, laugh years ago, and um, Oz was trying to convince me to to join this game called Odyssey, which sounded kind of cool. And he described the settings like, "Oh yeah, I like the idea. I'll be a Roman centurion and shield bash people and stab them with my sword." And then he said, "You can't stab people," and that was out. At the point, I was like, "It's gladiator. Why, why would I not?" So yeah. I, I got a. I got proper snooty airs on at that point. It's like, what do you mean you can't stab people with a gladius? Well, I'm not interested then. Um, and I was out at that point. But then, <laughs> and, I know, I was a proper little arse. Um, but then uh, our friend John, who plays um, uh, Jag, uh, our thing, um, he, it was after one of the MCMs where we've both been working, and he said, oh, I kind of like the idea of just doing like a fun like a LARP type thing. What would be really cool is to play some type of game, and I just want to rock up as like a level one goblin, run screaming into a fight, get killed, respawn, come back in again. And without realizing, he was basically describing the monster experience at Empire. Mm. Um, so he he then planted that seed further in my head. And then meanwhile, Oz had been describing this new game that um, PD were kicking off called Empire. And and the two kind of came together and it was like, actually, that does sound pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we ended up just going for it, diving in. Um, first event, there was only myself and Oz could make it from our crew. Uh, I got horrendously, horrendously drunk. Um, 
I've never been as drunk before or since. Um, homebrew, give it the respect it deserves, people. Um, also, the seven virtues of the Nist feud. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like that place. It's nice. It's dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. I got horrendous, just very ill on that. So ill. The fact, I'm, one of the main reasons I've mm. gone to Empire is I wanted to take part in the battles. Mm. And Oz and I were so ill the next morning, we couldn't make the battle. We couldn't go and do it. So my first event, I missed the primary reason I went. Turns out that battle was a little place called Icker's Tears, where Wintermark didn't do too well. So no. I missed that. That would have been my first battle experience. Oh, wow. See, that would have been a great experience as well. I, I, I personally, I love the battles where you turn up and you get the shit kicked out of you because you are run absolutely ragged. It was... They tend to, they, they tend to generate more story as well because mm. that's where the, the tensions really rise. People, people die. Um, some of my favourite battles have been the ones where I have died, where my characters have died. Um, and they're, they're, they're brilliant because, yeah, they inspire story even if your own character dies. Like my first character, Kadon... Um, it was cursed from the beginning because I ended up using my online handle as my character name, which was a stupid idea Dumb. in retrospect. Yeah. Um, yeah, he. that was just, it was one of the classic, uh, we got cut off, the army withdrew, we got left behind, blah, 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 blah. Kadan was boring. He was, I didn't know what I was doing. He had no character. But his death created more game than he ever did alive. So... His one, his one saving grace is that he was the only Scarsind Thane who voted in favour of the motion to cede Scarsind to the Orcs. So ah. that was his claim to that was his claim to fame. Yeah, or well, claim to Thane. Hey, <laughs> oh. this is why I'm, I, I'm not allowed nice things. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I I like. I like it when the when ba when battles go wrong and you get the great stories and you get people coming back and it's like but you've been beaten senseless but you you're able to sit there and go yeah it is bad but we did this we did this we did this and you do more heroic things yeah in a in a battle that's gone bad than you do in the battle that goes really really well yeah. so I mean that's I think it's I mean from what I've seen of uh, you you I think you and Smith you fight in a very similar sort of mentality ability is very different but mentality very similar i i try harder than smith does to not go on my ass so every single fight every battle i've been in with smith within like the first 30 seconds of contact somehow he will end up on his ass yes. and i swear that's that's why he has his his crew around him now uh the bronze guard so he'll fight he fights like a badass he's an, he's an absolute juggernaut when he's at it but i don't know what it is Within minutes, he'll be on his ass somehow. Yeah, yeah, it's, he's in my unit now. Yeah. That I'm leaving, I used to, but he's. I, I used to really enjoy fighting alongside Smith because, first off, we're, we're both tall buggers and we we both use pole arms, and it was great. And we'd do a um, uh, like an upstairs downstairs routine, so both of us in the shield wall and be like, right, that guy there, you go high, I go low, and then when you got two of them, one attacking high, one attacking low, and you just keep poking and harassing mm. him until they eventually go down. Then you move on to the next. Really good fun. Especially you've got, you got some good shields just keeping yeah. you safe. That was really good fun. There are there's a, a few. Uh, James, James, I don't know, James uh, he started with, like, Helen's asked uh, anyone here go about it the other way. Start with LARP and then go into tabletops, obviously, where you went from tabletop to LARP. Um, James has said he started with Empire, no roleplay experience, and he's now playing and he's DMing D and D. Um, he also rocked up to Empire alone, not knowing anyone. See, I've got mad respect for people who do that. Yeah, I, I, I could not do it. I'm, I'm an awkward socialiser, um, which I know might seem. Tarek is a lot better at socialising than than I am. Mm. Um, but yeah, the having cold conversations i found it hard enough so when we went in there was myself and oz so he knew a few people so he knew the stenstorff crew from odyssey yeah. so the very first event they offered us hospitality which just set the tone for me for that event but anytime we were away from those guys i'd try walking around and, and i just didn't know how to start a conversation i didn't know no. how to get involved with anything 
Um, yeah, so people who, who can rock up to an event on their own. Um, yeah, massive, massive respect for people who can pull that off. Yeah, so he just came up on his own. I mean, that's incredible. That is. Yeah. Then you got uh, Liam, he comes from a theatre background also. He just wondered, since he's fairly new to LARP, uh, if this year's goes ahead, he'll be a. F- uh, I just wondered, since I'm fairly new to LARP, and if this year's goes ahead, it'll be his first uh, first experience, but he has D&D experience. I think we'll get I think we'll get an event in this year. Maybe t- hopefully two. Hope. Uh, what is the what is the reactions like to corpsing in such an empire? Um yeah, so for the the initial uninitiated <laughs> corpsing, um if if you're on stage it's like just when it just breaks down and you drop character, you you just it can either come as in you just corpsing and you start pissing yourself or you just completely freeze up. Um and yeah it, it happens it's people will drop character at times in empire and, and one of the key things is i always find the lines like just don't affect other people's immersions um and it, it can be difficult especially if you've not been so um uh, liam if, if this is your first event the key the single most useful phrase for you is i'm sorry i'm new to anvil everyone will get it that is code for oh shit i've never been here before i don't know what the hell i'm doing um and everyone everyone's used that phrase and it's totally cool um and i think if if you do need to do it if it happens you break down your brain freezes um just have a quiet moment if you're in conversation with someone and you go i don't quite know to go then you can say sorry i've never been to anvil I'm a little stuck at this point. The person mm. you're speaking with, they'll be like, "Gotcha." It's absolutely cool. Yeah, they've um, yeah. Uh, Liam actually went on and explained it there. So if I I read like three lines down, <laughs> I would have seen that. Um, so breaking character or character bleed. So it's similar. It's not. I wouldn't have said it's any, like any, it's nothing really like character bleed because uh, character bleeds where you're something happens to your character and then it comes into it affects you so i think that yeah. that kind of links into the whole uh lot blues i guess where you when you come home from an event and you're like oh you're a bit down and you don't know what to do with yourself and stuff like that um but yeah it's just saying uh, there's nothing wrong with it best stay clear best stay in character where you can in the icy field but if you can't you can't like you've said just yeah. do it that way um non pander i thought i loved this this is this was making me ch- chuckle when i i thought corpsing was the empire version of planking <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant um dave the uh, lover uh i've seen experienced players use i'm new to anvil it's a great line for anyone to use i've used it yeah i've used it a couple yeah. of times speaking to my uncle uh, Justin, who knows that I'm not new, oh. and I've been there for years, and then I've said I've used Anvil, and it's because it's his character's like second event in his center, he's looking at me. It's good when you can make an experienced player like that just go shake the head and walk away <laughs> from you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's, that's that's good. That makes me chuckle. Um, it, it, it's also it's also interesting. So I've never been to Anvil is also very useful for if you died. And you come back as another character. And I've I've had this where I've I've been stood next to it. There was a chap um, uh, called um, Boric Boric Blackhand, and I had not realised that he died in a battle. So I'm stood next to his his fizz rep and I start chatting to him, and I'm like, oh, I noticed the lineage is coming on a little bit stronger. And he's like, you seem to be confusing me with someone else. I have never <laughs> been to Anvil. And I was like, what? <laughs> oh, and at that point, and that that's doubly doubly awkward because first off, um, it means oh, I've just made a bit of a faux pas. I was confusing him with another character, um, his own character. But also, in that case, it was like, oh, shit, oh, shit. oh no, dude. And I wanted, to, oh, what, you died. Oh, gutted. And I can't have that conversation with him because I'm chatting right. to the character, not the player. Um, but yeah, so he, he he was my captain. He was my um my skirmish captain at the time, and I was like, yeah, oh, right. uh, yeah. It's it's suddenly yeah. twigged who you were talking about there. Yeah, because yeah, he's died a lot. He <laughs> <laughs> he's died a lot. <laughs> yes, he um, has. 
Yeah, so Jason said, yeah, post LARP blues are the worst. Uh, oh, um, Roadie Bob, I'm guessing that's Mark. That's Mark, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so um, Mark, uh, I've never had post LARP blues. I think it's because I'm on the lesser side of invested in my character and the game as a whole. Um, uh, is there like a limit of events before post LARP blues, etc.? Uh, uh, sets in because I imagine it's like going to Comic Con for the first time and having so much excitement and adrenaline that it doesn't affect for a few events. It, no, I, I, I think it's each to their own. On the end of the day, with that one, yeah, it post light blues have never really used to affect me. For I've been going to Empire since right from the beginning, and it got someone described me in our combat group as um, as an E one er, so. <laughs> so, because I've I've been there since the beginning, and they never really affected me at all. But it took my it was only with Mac to be honest, my new character, so my second character. That's when it started to affect me a bit more because I think mm. I was more involved and I was more invested. Uh, so I get home and then it's so I've I've developed a little routine for myself for when I get in to sort of pull my, get myself back into steve and stuff like that so it's always the same so it's any alcohol that's left and the takeaway so i come and sit down film on computer game and i'm just sat there and i'm done that's my yeah. evening phone goes off i'm i'm sat there so it's even like with when um my other my fiance when she was up at uni we'd call and message and that when i get home but it would get to like seven o'clock in the evening and it'd be like i'm off and i want me time and then i'd I'd get drunk on my own. It's horrible to say yeah. it. I'd be drunk on my own with a nice big dirty kebab and that's me and I'm done. And then I wake up the following morning because I never get a hangover and I get up and I'm just like carrying on as normal. So it's... I, think... I, I don't think I've ever had the post LARP blues. Um, and I don't know, that could be because I'm emotionally dead inside. Um, but I think, I think partly because I'm just... Like at the end of it, I'm so physically exhausted mm. that it's it's almost like a that was amazing. It was fulfilled. Um, I'm, I'm physically knackered, but I don't think I've ever had that emotional slump afterwards. Um, yeah, I think partly because there's there's like the, the online ritual these days after the event as well, where you get online, you post your hots and nots, you wait feverishly for the first photos to appear, um, yeah. and but and you see people chatting afterwards, and there's this frenzy of, of post events social media. And that, for me, is that's a nice therapeutic thing, I think. Um, but it, it's it's funny, because he... Where he's likening it to the... Um, I sorry, he, Liam, I could say that. Uh, where you're likening it to the, the post-con blues. I think some people do have it in a very similar manner to the post-con mm. blues. But if you come from a theatre background, I'd, I'd probably say it's... it's very akin to the post-show blues, which which is a very similar thing in that you've been invested so heavily in this this fake world that you've been living in for for however many days, weeks, months, and these people who you've been so close to, mm. and then suddenly it's gone. It's like instantly you're separated and, and you're back in the real world, and it's a it's a very similar feeling. Um, and even that, I, I very rarely get post-show blues these days as well. I had it for my first time in years last year. Um, but yeah, I think the root cause is very similar. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think everyone deals with it in a different way. I think the only thing that you can learn from con blues, show blues, lark blues is don't listen to the blues. See, we're, we're dad jokes all night. Um, <laughs> so, um, so what else have we got here? Uh, to do, to do, I. Never had a lot blues. No, done that one. Done that. I found that, that post lot blues have affected me more the longer my character has stayed alive. Yeah. Uh, some people get it event one. I freely admit that I go to see friends. It's more of an excuse to hang out with yeah. people. I don't see as often as I'd like. I just have to dress a uh, funny way and remember a different name to do it. Yeah, that's. I think that's a that's a big thing. It's a lot of people do it for to see friends. Um, it's like a friend of mine, Joel. Um, he's from Sweden. And he comes over. He doesn't. He doesn't see us any of any of the group, any people uh, from over here, apart from when he comes to LARP. So that's a big thing for him yeah. as well. And I think that's a great thing. I mean, and I think it's difficult with people who have like these days. You've got friends groups who are who are so distributed, and 
And um, to go back to my first character again, Kadan, I was him for about a year and a half. Mm. And these events would be an excuse to come together, sit, drink, chill. I barely left Wintermark, let alone my own camp. Um, but I had an amazing time because I was hanging out with these friends who yeah. I barely get to see. I mean, Roly, uh, Roly, we live, well, like about 10 miles apart from each other. Like, we're, we're both fairly close. Um, like, in fact, of the entire lab group, you're probably geographically the closest to us. And we still hardly ever see each other, um, except for at events, because just people are busy. But the beauty of Empire is you're there, and the real world goes away. There's no messages. You can just relax and actually enjoy some of that quality face-to-face -face time, which I just use the term FaceTime, and it, it makes me feel a little bit ill inside. Yeah, I'm I'm about to end the stream on that note. It's horrible. Yeah. How dare you? Oh my god, I apologize everyone. That's uh yeah. It's a bit so, touchy feeling. <laughs> um so I guess uh Brad, uh, I'm usually buzzing for about a week and then, then he gets the hump for a bit. Yeah. Um I buzz. I massively buzz. It's the first night when I'm back. That's when I go, oh, because I'm not in a field anymore. I'm not singing. I'm not having a drink. I'm not fighting. And it's like, I've got to go and be nice to people now rather than an obnoxious twat, <laughs> basically. And, it, and it's, it's almost a given as well that the next day at work, it's like, I am going to accomplish nothing. Nothing will be achieved at work today because you're going to be knackered, thinking about what's gone on, refreshing Facebook on a regular basis. Where, where I used to work, um, my manager... Uh, my old manager, he's. Um, I used to go in, and he knew when I'd been at LARP the f my first day back in. It's not worth me getting anything. So all he used to say, he'd say to me, "I'll give you something really easy to do. It'd keep you off of the phones, away from the computer, away from people, on one condition: you bring me a bottle of homebrew." So I would always <laughs> keep one bottle of two feet cider spare, bring it back down, and give it to him. I remember the first time he drank it properly because he was a bit of a drinker and he he didn't come into work the following day. He was he was fucked. He was wrecked. Absolutely wrecked. And he couldn't come in the following day. That that homebrew that would have, I was warning people to pay respect to? Definitely. Anything, anything that tastes so sweet that you can't actually taste the alcohol? Yeah. That's the danger. Yeah, that's, that's the bad one. I, did, I made... Um, Oh, I'll come to that story in a, in a second. Uh, Helen says, I always feel a bit down after a couple of days, but then it's over for a couple of days. Uh, Non-Panda, missed everyone, pe uh, missed seeing everyone, uh, seeing people in Orc masks randomly. That's my post lot blues. Yeah. Oh, no. This is, this is why you always keep it close to hand, just in case you need it for, like, work conference calls, calls to the family, putting on the window ledge, terrifying the neighbours. Having an armory behind you when you're uh, on a conference call. I remember yeah. you telling me that one. But, um, yeah, we did. It was, um, for, th for those who haven't seen it, the, uh, Tabletop Weekly, um, Mark Humes has done some very good, well, he, he has done some very good videos he, uh, about Empire and LARP. He hasn't done them for quite a while now. Um, he did some fantastic ones. And one of the videos, he talks about a certain evening where he gets a little bit inebriated, mildly, Perry Cider. mildly drunk. And that was when he, uh, because I always used to turn, I used to give, bring people bottles of cider, especially like, ro uh, yeah, Rose. Uh, yeah, always used to, yeah, I know. Uh, always used to bring a bottle for her. And so I gave a bottle to, uh, to Mark as well. He had drunk his, and then he nicked, right, he nicked Lisa's as well, and then proceeded to get a bit more drunk. But with that as well, I had made some Werther's original vodka, and you could not taste the vodka. And I was taught, I remember, because me and Trot, we were off, and we came back, and we were and we were talking about it, and we were like, oh yeah, let's go and get that, we can carry on drinking. And I went to get, get it. Two thirds of it had gone. And I remember Mark going, yeah, I like that stuff. And it's like, mate, this is this is vodka. And he's been down in it because you can't taste the vodka. Yeah. It's so dangerous. I think this, it was one of those fun ones where um, Mark sometimes does as well because he likes his sweet drinks as well. So if he gets like a sweet sugar drink, he'll, he'll neck it. And then 
I, I rarely know anyone who can be drinking, 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 drinking. And he doesn't, there's no sliding scale for him. There's a switch and suddenly he goes, it's fine, 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 fine. Boom. And then he's gone. And that was one of those times where Mark was fine over there. And I turned around, turned back and absolute state. So, yeah, I, I think, that, I think that was the event where we're like, Mac's good. We'll, we'll keep Mac. Mac Mac's a good one. Yeah. We'll, uh, we, we like Mac. <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciated a lot of, um, the stuff I got from, from that event because that that sobered me up massively that it was it was seeing how he was and knowing that if because people around weren't in a sober enough situation to help him and so doing that it, it was good i mean he's so light he is so light mark as well i remember holding him up like this he's so light just shaking him around a bit like a little rag doll but yeah that was uh Go on, what are you going to say? Don't. I was going to say, don't shake the baby. Just it out, but I wasn't sure, <laughs> I wasn't sure what you were going to go with is like picking up with so light that like a, he was. I like to shake him like it's like Steve. Where are you going with this? But um, that's that's a whole other story. Go and watch Mark's video on that because they talk yeah. about that a lot more detail and they and it's it's funny. But he doesn't drink anywhere near as much as he used to. Now, Mark, it was a valuable lesson for him, and he's learned from I think it. I think a lot of people have that experience where they get drunk at that one really bad time as events like this. Um, partly because they're drinking unfamiliar booze where they're not familiar how strong it is. Um, water isn't quite as readily accessible because it's all the way over there. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I think. You, you, and you do, it is a genuine thing, like with a slightly more serious hat on. Um, we've had people at some of these horrendous weather events get absolutely sozzled, fall down in a soaking ditch where the water is is like literally if we just left you there you would die mm. so it's like please people look after yourselves yeah yeah it's it's pretty bad I, yeah i mean mark that marks wasn't even the worst one in my case i picked up a guy who couldn't even walk i picked up a guy who fell into a ditch it's just like I, i've said to people in, in one of these other videos and i've just said if you if you feel yourself getting like that don't be that guy because not only are you ruining your event for the next day when you woke up with the worst hangover you've ever had, yeah. but you've also probably taken three or four people out of their game and they have to then get you back home and look after you. Yeah. So I didn't mind so much for Mark because after that, me and uh, Trot went off and carried on drinking. <laughs> we I, had... I think also, he, after, he, after he voided most of the cider down uh, Daniel Gamberson, I think he sobered up pretty quickly after that. Yeah, yeah. I remember putting him to bed. To be honest, that was that was an interesting one. But yeah, let, let's get into something a little bit more um, more positive. So, um, apart from the fact, yeah, two feet cider, it's best. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so when because so you do a lot of you do a lot. Of, you're known you're known for for fighting and not much else really. You don't really do too much in the field, from what I've seen. You t you're quite quiet. You're Fairly reserved. You like to sit back and not do much. Yeah, is there anything? Like to out there. Is there anything that you would really like to do in that field? Is there anything that you've thought, "Oh, that would be good fun"? So at the point when, so after my second character, Conobar died. So first character, Kadan, he was kind of boring. He was just me with a different name, so he was kind of dull. Then I made Conobar, who was just completely fight happy. He was, he just wanted to get out and have a scrap all the time. He didn't last a year. Then after that, I actually put some more thought into a character and I was thinking, what do I what do I really want from Tarek? And when I rocked up in my first event, I even at that point I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go down the route of the scop or the crow. I was really tempted by the, the scop or the priest game. Mm -hmm. Um I had this idea of wanting to be a game maker so i looked at people like shaman um who have spoken up before and i will i will never stop singing his praises as a player who makes game he generates game for other people um and i, I wanted to create a character who wasn't the hero i didn't want him to be like the, the, the shepherd the hawk the warden i wanted him to be that really cool companion character so when you're running around in an RPG and you've got that cool character who's maybe got a bit of a side quest that they will then take you on and will give you some cool dance. Um, 
And I honestly wasn't sure whether that would be whether it's the Scop side of things or the um or the crow side because scop sounded cool but i don't know i didn't have any songs i hadn't written any songs in years so i didn't know what i was going to do there yeah and then i had one brief rp experience as i think i was going to doubt normally having been a, a crow at the time and i had one nice cool experience there and that was really nice that was that was that was cool i was able to help a new player who had turned up they had this backstory where they'd been afraid. I was able to help counsel them a little bit. And mm. that was really cool. And I think that's the thing that I'd, I'd probably like to do more of that type of thing. It's difficult now because Tarek has, it would be difficult to do that without betraying what Tarek has become as the character. Mm. He's, he's got much of a, a solid grounding now. So to do anything else would be too much of a hard pivot, I think. Um, but that, that is still something I would like to do more of. Be like a quest giver, you know, a, a game maker for other people. Um, so I think I'm still saving that for the next character. There's some stuff that I want to do with Tarek in terms of helping people in the Scop game, that side of things. But yeah, I, I've never once... Hold on. I have once actually been involved in plot. Um, which isn't a, oh no, plot never finds me. It's not plot's job to find me. It's my job to find plot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than the, the aforementioned scarce in motion, which was a huge deal for Wintermark, and um, Kadan's like, yes, only scarce in Thane who voted in favor of the scarce in motion. It's a big deal. And then he popped his clogs. So I wasn't really able to maximize on the roleplay potential of that. Mm. And and this is me doing whoa, 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 tiny pylons because I've had some excellent times in the fighting game, excellent times in the scop game. Yeah. But I've never really engaged with the plot side of things. And that's that's something that I'd I'd like to do at some point. But I've just never found that hook that really works for me. Yeah, I think that's I think plot is one of those things, isn't it? That um, it's it's always out there. It's the uh... It's that it's the little light off in the distance. It's the light at the end of the tunnel that all everybody looks for. Um, you've been getting some. You've been getting a bit of love in uh, in chat at the moment uh, from Dave the Larper. It's a slightly off topic, but I saw uh, Andrew singing a bar in Wintermark at my first event. It was one of the highlights of my weekend. Instant immersion. In short, thanks. So that's thank you very much, Dave. That's really nice. Yes. In uh, fact, I think I, I I probably know the exact event that you were meaning because. Generally, I'm singing. If it was in an event, uh, in fact, because I've listened to podcasts as well, and I'm pretty certain I do know which event that was, because that was another horrendously muddy one. Um, in fact, that was the same event I had a strop. That was the exact same event I had. I had my little strop. <laughs> and yeah, I think what had been intended there was we were going to do like a festival of the bards for the for Wintermark, and it was going to be really cool. And then the weather happened, so we ended up doing it inside the Artstone's Arms, which was still really cool. And I got to a bunch of performers who I'd not seen previously as well. Um, yeah, so I know exactly which event you're yeah. talking about there, Dave. That was interesting. Yeah. And Helena said uh, his songs are amazingly good, especially for everyone joining in. Um, James said, yeah, so Andrew singing the... The Gilden, Gilden Lane, Lane. Uh, group tab. Uh, it was amazingly mar marvellous, honestly. It was a great song. And then uh, Roly saying he's putting his degree to use finally. Honestly... <laughs> It, so I mentioned I did like theater and stuff and I was so my background was in music and theater and performing arts uh, mm. I did that all the way through school and did it at college my degrees in performing arts came out of it decided all right I'm gonna move to London I'm gonna move from Cumbria down to that there London and and with my girlfriend at the time now my wife um, and yeah I'm gonna be a real actor and all of that um, and then I went and smashed my collarbone to pieces had to go full-time on the temp job I was doing and then got used to this whole getting paid on a regular basis thing. It's disgusting. Um, I know. But then I didn't do anything. So I did no theatre, no performance, no music for, um, yeah, over 10 years after that. And funny enough, I got back into theatre the same year that I started LARPing. Uh, so 10-year gap, both of them started at the, at the same time. Mm -hmm. And... It's not, it's not an exaggeration to say it changed my life. Um, I had not realised how much I missed doing this. 
Um, uh, you could have said a little bit scary. That did well, but you could have said that in the recording earlier. But you know, it just that would have been a great answer. <laughs> to be honest, I'm in the same spot here. Just splice it in; it's fine. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm still it. shaking the table a bit. You're doing well. It's I mean, I've always looked at the people who tell stories, sing songs, and, and stuff like that, and I and I hold them in awe. I can't sing. I can't tell us. I can't really tell a story. I've tried to sing once, and then it it made me think. All right, I need to get to do this, and I asked you for help to do it, and I never messaged you. I never sent anything over and I just thought I can't do it I'm never going to be able to do it and then I have actually sung now in the field I have sung yeah I have sung once yes. and that was at Kiartan's funeral where me and Kit we sang Wayfaring Stranger in the pub and everyone in the bar stopped and they listened and then yeah and then we started nicking their stuff and then it was went back to normal <laughs> really so that that was where Knifey Table came from as well so but Yes, I mean the, everything that you do. I, I, I'm in awe, absolute awe, on what you do because you get everyone's attention. You get everyone around, and people come out of that and they feel people feel pumped. You can see them, just like yeah, the the adrenaline has kicked in for them, and they feel really into it. So I mean, you, 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 you have a gift there, my friends. You really, really do, and I think a lot of people here will. Um, will back me up on that one as well. Uh, so as we got uh, writer limerick. See, I say reading is exercise for the eyes. Writing is exercise for the fingers. I'm just not doing it. Look at me. I do not exercise. <laughs> I, I've got I've got weights back there. I will lift heavy things. That's my exercise. Um, uh, forlorn hope. If you have a good starting experience, it can be with you for life. I'm terrible at the hobby these days. As I just don't put the effort in, but I still love it. It takes that, it, you get one, it, you can be, for me, it was, I wasn't enjoying Empire. I was, one event, I can still picture it. I did a skirmish and I came out of that skirmish and everyone in the Navarre were walking off down away from the gate. And I can still picture the, I can still picture the scene, I picture everything that happened because I took my armor off. And I had my weapons and I was just walking back and I walked away from everyone. And I just thought, I'm not coming back. I'm done with Empire. I'm so bored. I hate it. And I walked off and then someone came running up to me and just and, and she just said, um, she was like, what happened? And so as Mac does, I, just, I told her off and then said, you haven't given me a drink. It was Sue. When she was, she was staying and she came over and she just, and she went, oh, sorry came and got me a drink and then she sat me down I, I i personally think she took pity on me because i looked miserable as i was walking back on my own and she sat me down and we were chatting away then lisa came over and we we're having a little chat then uh i think john came out then oz and we were, they were all talking to me and then that was it and it was just sort of like and then um trot and smith came out and they were asking questions and i was like this is good fun and then they were like yeah we're all we're going on a pub crawl that that Steve's paying for. And it was, it was just like, okay. So, I mean, I have that sort of thing. So it takes one thing that can really drag you back into this, into this hobby. So, I mean, you might not be, you might think you're, you're terrible at the hobby and stuff like that and just don't put the effort in. But I, I think something I think will happen. Also allow yourself to have those moments as well. Um, yeah. It's Empire can be very high energy and it's very difficult because you see a lot of people who absolutely grab the game by the throat and they're running left right and center and it's exhausting and you and you're like wow so much respect for that but you don't have to be doing that to enjoy it you don't have to do that to enhance other people's game even if you just turn up you chill out and you're just set dressing for someone else's story if you enjoy that mm. that's great there's absolutely nothing wrong with that mm. i had a similar experience uh, it wouldn't have been last year, it would probably been the year before, where there were a couple of events where I just wasn't feeling it. The enthusiasm yeah. was starting to wane. Um, I was really struggling, low energy, and I just wanted to, to chill out with friends. And I took one event where I did next to no performing, I sang a little bit at our own fire, um, didn't really do any big skirmishes, and I just recharged the batteries. Great. And that got me the keen back because... That's just what I needed at that time. Yeah. 
there's um oh uh uh Cough V says hello. Hello. Thanks for coming along. Uh Roly got a Google Doc with a handful of Empire themed limericks. He fires them off. Does he? Yeah. He's like a spitfire with those things. He'll be something will come off and he'll just like bum 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 bum. Fantastic. I'll have to I'll have to read some of those. Uh, Dave, yeah. oh, that's amazing. I, I wrote one just to break the fear of performing. 15 seconds, it was all over. Felt great doing it at Songs and Storytime. See, that's 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 all you need. Yeah. I tried to sing um, um, Put My Hand Upon Her Toe. That was one I tried to sing. And it's, it's, it's a filthy song, and it's aptly sung by... I would, perfect for Mac. And <laughs> for me, it was just like, I just couldn't do it. I, I sang one line and then went, Nah, and people go, "Come on, you could do it." And it's like, "No, nah, no, nah, I'm done. I've got a drink. I'm out. See you later." Like I've got, and I've walked off, <laughs> and that was it. So, it it is interesting with things like that. So, um, for for Dave, um, uh, by the way, the Noobs Lab podcast, great. Um, it's so I listened to the podcast where he's described that that event where you know the build up and and the, the courage and, and getting up to do it and then having people cheering him on and, and it's great and and there's a couple of things in that first off i've never known any environment and i've i've done gigs where i used to play in rock stuff i've done like um, theater mm-hmm. stuff um it's i've never known any environment that is so encouraging and so welcoming as empire I've seen people nervous as hell, barely able to string two notes together because they're so just just so wound up. And everyone in that audience is cheering them on, giving them the encouragement they need to finish these things through. I've seen people stumble over songs partway through, and then there are people just start applauding, not to get them to finish off, but to give them the encouragement and have people behind them. Um, yeah. And... And yeah, it's it's terrifying. I mean, the the, the first song I ever did at Empire um, was "Sing for the Mark," um, which is like a big shouty winter mark song. Um, never heard it. <laughs> no, never gets trotted out very often. Yeah, um, the, the, this joke will filter out eventually. Yeah. I, it will. I promise. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> but the, the very first time I did that, I didn't even have the full song. Um, it was. I, I think some people had been around the fire. And I wasn't sure what to do. In fact, you know what? It wasn't even Tarek. It was it was Conobau's last event, I think. And he'd been I just had this refrain, just the chorus from Sing for the Mark running around my head. And um and then I was like, Oh, I've, I've got a song I, I wouldn't mind trying to do and, and the handful of people around the fire and I just started going so you start off going, <coughs> Sing for the Steiner, Sing for the Suak, Sing for Calavis, and, and then everyone goes, Sing for the Mark. And then we did a couple of rounds of that, I was like, Oh, Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Then, and then I sat down again, and and that was terrifying. It was yeah. terrifying. And then later it became a, a full song. Um, but yeah, it's like every every time you get up to perform something, if if Tarek looks cool, calm, and confident, acting, it's bullshitting, darling. <laughs> um, seriously, it's, it's, <laughs> it is nerve wracking. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been trying to get uh, persuade Dave, uh, my last stream, to uh, link uh, the podcast. Uh, he didn't, and so Dave, if you got the link, mate, chuck it, chuck it into chat this time. Yeah, if you can. If anyone has the link for it, no, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm help trying to help. <laughs> um, oh dear, uh, coffee. Uh, I've been set dressing for like two years. I like giving other people game. I don't mind sitting on the side with a drink. No, it's um, it's yeah, it's it's just one of those things. I mean, I think you you see the people who who I think need the plot in the game. They they really will go looking for it, and they want to be involved in so much going on. Um, mm-hmm. And then you see the people who are happy to just sit there, and they're the ones who are probably a little bit more, let's say, a bit more experienced. They're a lot more comfortable in what they're doing and everything. So, because I mean, I used to be like that. I would sit there. I was just comfortable in doing, doing everything I can, and yeah, chill out, relax, have a nice drink, and and stuff. And I'm grateful to say, for me, my character has grown to the point where that's definitely 
definitely gone flying out of the window. I can't sit there and be quiet at all. Yeah. Ever. I and, and it's interesting yeah. that your character has become this forcing mechanic to to make you do that mm-hmm. in a way that you pr- you probably wouldn't as Steve you wouldn't but as as Mac it gets you to explore that other other aspect. Yeah, and I, I think it's kind of grown as well because where me and Chris we get on, where we got on so well and we just as people we just we just cl- really clicked and mm. I I don't think uh, I I wasn't expecting anything like that and then. We did more and more, and it grew and it grew and it grew, and it's become that massive nuisance now that happens on a Saturday night. I would say around one ten, it's it's em- it's become empire wide, and that I yeah. get I get people asking about it, and they're like, "Oh, can we come?" And it's like, "Well, it's a spur of the moment thing," and we try to hide from people a lot. So it's there's, there's a, spe- a special point that happens when we're chatting, chatting fine, and then. You'll just hear this giggle, and you'll turn around, and they'll be Trot and Steve or Mac and Grimm as they as they will be at that point, and you'll look at them, and there'll be a sudden smile on their faces, like ah, are we are we compromised now? Are we uh, chemi- chemically compromised at this stage, shall we say? Um, yeah. And what what's fascinating is because um, I think with even even Trot, so I didn't know Trot much longer. Um, I think I only knew him for maybe one event or so before we met you guys. Um, and because I only saw him at these events, I didn't really know Chris Trot. Mm. I knew Grimm. Yeah. And it was it was would be a while before I actually got to hang out with him much outside of Empire. So most of my experience was, oh yeah, Chris Trot. Of course, I only know Grimm, and he's he's an adorable idiot. Yeah, because he is. Grim is an utterly adorable idiot, um, who is as much a danger to himself as he is to the people around him. Um, Especially fire. Yeah, <laughs> I got but I got more burned from that than he did. Because you were paying him. Yeah, yeah. For the context, for anyone who wasn't aware, there was a time when we were stood around the fire, and we had these wonderful like tiki light torches around, and then one of our members, Steve um, uh, Algar, as he was, for one point, just kind of looked up, looked across the fire and went, someone's on fire. And what had happened is Trot, with his lovely furry mantle, had stepped back a little too close to one of these torches and these synthetic fabrics had just gone... Yeah. And everyone's gone, so funny. Oh, that person's on fire and ended up leaping across the bench, smacking him on the back repeatedly. He was like, what the fuck are you doing? Burn my hand on it. It's, yeah... I, I love all of that sort of stuff, and and you see how you see when you when you get to know people and you see how people grow and and their characters change and stuff like that. And I think Grim Grim's Grim's definitely changed. Oh yeah, yeah, Mass- massively. He's massively changed, and I would like to take some responsibility. No, absolutely. I think the the way you two have created this like terrible terrible twosome, the pair of you, it's 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 great. It's, uh, I think it's helped Trot create an identity beyond the original character concept that he came mm. up with. Um, so yeah, massively, massively beneficial. Yeah, it, it's fun. I think it's helped with uh, definitely with me with all the people around as well because you get to sit down, chat, and and all of that sort of stuff. So uh, oh, we've had a few more uh, bits coming on there. So, uh, what advice would anyone give uh, for someone who is going on their own and is super nervous? Also, I don't want to get into the trade side of things. Also, I want to get sorry into the trade side of things, but again, super nervous. Trade. <laughs> that is, I, I see people um, who are just masters of that, and frankly. Yeah. It's it's another level of sorcery to me. Um, He's a winter marker as well. Yeah, um, there's definitely oh. loads of games to be had there. Yeah, it, I, I think I think it's the same as uh, James. who just said he just turned up and he was very much turned up on my own, did my own thing, and, and that was it. You turn up in a field on your own. I I had perfect example, Helen. <laughs> my my now my my fiance she turned up with a friend of hers who then buggered off and let and abandoned her 
for a, an event and she and I bumped into them both helped them got them set up they came and joined joined up with the two feet and the reason that they came is due to a certain YouTube channel that happened with a uh, I think you described him as the ugliest winter marker Mr. Humes <laughs> love him so but Mark um, yeah and they saw that and that's what brought them to like a lot of other people and then, but they turned up on their own. They meet, we meet people, and you meet, you make connections, and you make you make friends away from the game from doing us. So don't turn yeah. up thinking, oh, we will just be there chatting away. I'll be there on my own or anything like that. No, you will get picked up. You will get adopted quite quickly. You will hang around with people. You will make good friends. I'm so for me, the person who turned up on her own, I'm I, I'm now engaged to and we live together and yeah. all of this sort of stuff and yeah and it's so anything can happen i'm not saying i'm going to marry them but you know <laughs> you can't do all of them no exactly um, yeah liam i'm just saying in your case as well so if, if you're going in, in wintermark um uh i can't remove who saw it um but yeah one of the best ports of call is the egregores um yeah. who should obviously be the, the first mood you'll likely see the egregores around um if not you can ask where they are people will hopefully be able to point you in that direction the the egregores fulfill a number of roles but one of their key roles is helping people find ways into the game exactly reasons like this they'll be able to connect you with a few people um also within wintermark we have these uh, positions they're called the council of seven and what they are are basically specialists in their area their official role is to advise the Thames Council on certain aspects. So you'll have the alderman who advises on matters of trading. You'll have, um, uh, the, like, the Speaker for the Crows who will advise the Thames Council on religious matters and so on and so forth. Um, their job isn't to help other people. However, they have those roles because they are recognised as authorities in their field. Mm -hmm. um, they will likely be announced um, at the moot as well or make themselves known. Or if not, just ask around. Um, yeah, they're they're good contacts if you need. I need someone who knows about this thing who might be able to help me get into certain aspects of the game. And that's yeah. the type of thing where if you find the alderman or just say, hi, it's my first time in Anvil. I need to generate some funds. I have these resources. How do I turn them into coin or whatever? You can start that conversation. Yeah. There's, there's just saying here that uh, you'll have a blast. Wintermark are very welcoming. Welcoming. Uh, I initially wanted to be in Wintermark, but was put off by the sheer size. So I joined Wintermark from another nation, so that's mm. where that's where my uh, that's where the role play took me. Um, the only trade I've ever done is with Liao. Uh, I would highly recommend talking to your national egregore there. They have to be guys and help you find your place. Yeah, uh, yeah, egregore got. Yeah. Her James got adopted before time in happened. Uh, Mister Joe. Uh, I turned up by myself and made friends with a lot of people of, in my nation, Varushka, and I definitely got adopted and some other players wanted to get me involved in some plot, mainly Inquisition plot. That's, yeah. the uh, Yeah, I think I've, I've been threatened with Inquisition uh, a couple of times, mainly by um, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Was, oh, right, excellent. <laughs> um Coffee. Uh, Liam and I will be your adoptive lap parent. Um, <laughs> uh, Boo the bald. Uh, I've only been to two events and I really regret not approaching the Mark Egregore. Definitely my first put of call my next event to hopefully get me more involved in the game. Yeah, it's yeah. I can't I can't say any more than that. You go along, you hear anything, a story, people whispering about it all and stuff like that. Ask a question. Just ask. Go up yeah. to anybody and say, what's this? They'll tell you. Then go, oh, but we can do that or maybe that. That is you getting involved in plot, creating your own bits of plot, and you run and you run with it. And it's, yeah. it's and, fantastic. And with, things, with things like that, never – and obviously be respectful of the, other people's time and if they're midway through another conversation, respect that and so on. However, asking someone, like finding a specialist in an area and say, hi, I'm curious about this thing. Can you tell me about this specialist thing that you know a lot about? Generally speaking, people will love to do that. If for no other reason than the fact that we are nerds. And one of the things nerds love doing is talking about a thing that they know lots about. Mm. So 
and people enjoy helping other people get into the game. It, it, it yeah. gives people that nice warm buzz. Yeah. See, Mac loves to talk about anything and even especially stuff he knows nothing about. It's that's yeah. pretty much how I. Yeah, that's where I run with it. Um, so Liam, getting a bit deeper into things, I want to sell potions after a few events. Uh, I have a banner and hall that I want to make uh, called Broken Potion. And although I'm thinking I'm, in, aim, I'm aiming high, I want to be one noticeable seller of potions. It's a great idea. Brilliant idea. Honestly, that right there, you sorted. You've got a strategy. Yeah, you got make yourself noticeable, a nice banner. Um, there'll be moots and stuff. You can wander around. Um, moots can be weird. Sometimes a moot oh. can be a great opportunity to introduce yourself and say, I'm new to Anvil and I am offering this new service. Um, sometimes moots can drag on a little bit too long, um, but that's not a bad thing, especially if you're announcing yourself as a, a someone who's new to Anvil uh, offering this service. Because, and I say this as someone, I I chug potions, I I burn through potions. Um, you'll find a lot of, um, whereas especially if you're specialising in certain areas, where it's like hero point potions or. Um, uh, I've forgotten the one that gives you more personal mana back, and it's a really efficient stuff like that um yeah great idea yeah it's there's um i can't, um, I can't think of what they're called now anymore but anyway there's a potion makers guild anyway so go and find them go and have a chat yeah i mean i'm sure they will help you uh yeah claire evans uh she's a new player team and she is an absolute legend she really is incredible she does so much good work um, go for it. Uh, ambition is a virtue. You can never aim too high. Uh, asking people, uh, priests, about the virtues in, is instant role play. They love to chat, and you'll learn while role playing. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah. That's a great that's one, a, actually. It, it's really good. The virtues are brilliant. It's one of the things I love most about Empire is the virtues. Even though I'm, I'm not really into the religious game, no. I've got mad respect for. I keep saying mad respect. I don't use this word ordinarily in day to day life. I don't know why it's coming out now. Because you're twelve. Um, yeah, I've got mad <laughs> respect, me, for um, uh, for the way the virtues have been designed. So things like um, ambition and pride. These are two things which are often kind of scorned or looked down on a little bit in day to day life. They create game. If in doubt. And if you're honestly there going, I don't know what to do. Should I do this thing? Should I not? Genuinely think, what would be virtuous? Yeah. Would it be virtuous to have pride in my abilities, to pursue my ambition, to have the courage to do this thing? Um, they are designed in such a way that they create game and help you decide what you should be doing. So if in doubt, what would the virtues Definitely. tell you to do? Definitely. Um, oh, be the ball. Uh, subscribed. Oh, thank you so much for that. Um, I'll talk about that. I think I'll mention that quickly. Um, I was having a chat with Andy before this uh, about something I want to do with this because I've never really had a goal for this stream or what I want to do with everything. And I came up with the, this idea of uh, people can subscribe to this through Amazon Prime. And what I have decided I want to do is... Uh, so it's $100. So for every time I get to that amount... I want to buy, you do a competition to pay, to use that money to pay for someone's ticket for Empire. So new players especially, I would love to give them, to be able to pay for them to have their first experience at Empire. Um, yeah, I think I just want to bring new people into the hobby that we all love so much. So anyway, that, that's my thing. So yeah, so if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can do you can you can subscribe to me with that, and then when I get to that certain that a certain amount, I will then run a little competition for people who are watching to do something, and they could win a free ticket for Empire. Well, say free. I mean, they'll get a ticket for Empire that I'll pay for f through the subscriptions and stuff. So, yeah. So hopefully that'll be a good thing. So yeah, yeah. So prosperity. Hopefully. Yeah, exactly. So it's a great thing. Um, so I want to witness a moot at some point. I need to make more friends in Wintermark. You can't miss a moot, really. <laughs> They're huge. Just turn up you, and watch, to be honest. Yeah, you might want to after you've had a few. Um, yeah, sometimes they can drag a little bit. Um, I've never watched the whole one. 
Yeah, one of the when I mentioned the Council of Seven earlier on, one of the very first Council Council of Seven positions that was created was the Warden, who's basically there to chair meetings. Their primary thing is they chair the Thanes meet and they chair the moot to make sure that they just run efficiently because. I've been in moots where they just run on and on and on. So the the um the I've got the title the warden is there to keep things running efficiently. Um, they are both the most efficient means of disseminating information, and they can sometimes reach a tipping point in a moot where, and now we're into any other business. And that's when you'll start to see people drifting off a little bit, which is fine, by the way. There's no obligation to stay at moot for the right. entire duration. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mad Hatter, uh, I asked the priest what virtue he supported uh, most and ended up being dedicated within 10 minutes. Always asking makes great game. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, really, really does. Uh, loyalty is the best virtue. Do you follow a virtue? So, I'm not dedicated at the moment. Um, backstory, uh, I roped it, I mentioned earlier that I was torn as to whether mm. I wanted to be priest or a scop. And what I ended up doing with my backstory was the idea that Tarek used to be a Stormcrow. So he used to be um, a, a Stormcrow being a Wintermark priest. He used to be a priest. And then he realised he could do more to inspire virtuous behaviour through song than he could through sermonising and, and being a crow. Um but throughout all of that, the one ambition I've been most fascinated by is ambition. Hmm. Uh, the one ambition, the, the virtue I enjoy the most is yeah. ambition. Um, because of all of the virtues, I find it the one that inspires action more than anything else. And I think it feeds into all of the other virtues, because all, all of the virtues have some kind of crossover aspect. Um so, like, courage without wisdom is recklessness and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah. But, but I find ambition is great because um, it, it ropes in all of the others. It oftentimes requires courage to pursue your ambition. You can take pride in the achievement of your ambition. Um, you've got to be vigilant and look for the opportunities and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think I'm not dedicated um, It's one of those ones where, again, put I really like ambition. Tarek is sees all of them as a virtuous thing, and even has a songbook on the matter, so uh, available in all good fields. Um, <laughs> we got um, uh, uh, look at this uh, uh, Courage, <laughs> yeah, Matt had a courage, mate, and uh, I'll fight you to prove it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Roly, longest in character chat was with Paul about wisdom. That boy can talk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's very courageous of you. Uh, I would love to vote uh, pride, but loyalty is a much better virtue wise. Uh, loyalty is the best. It's such a good assembly, too. Uh, Vico is wonderful. Uh, Liam, uh, the stream has helped me so much so far. Thank you for saying that, mate. Um, I think the other question I can think of is to do with backstory. Uh, my character wears a half face mask, although I've heard Wintermark don't really use masks. It got recommended, I'd be afraid, but I don't really understand it. Could I get some clarity? Uh, yeah. Masks are now a thing. Yeah, so I, I, I actually, I remember, I know you are now, Liam, um, I remember your post on the Wintermark boards, and I think I even commented on there. Um, yeah, it's down to you. There's nothing inherently... Uh, within Wintermark that says you shouldn't wear a mask. You'll see a lot of storm crows wear some form of mask as part of their um, headdress, mm. or the Calabasi headdress. Um, the, the one that you had, if I'm remembering right, is quite like a, a leathery um, mask, and you said to want to like, hide a disfigurement. Uh, or oh, a scar, I think it was. Things like that is interesting. So, yes, generally speaking, Wintermark, we take pride in our scars. We will sometimes deliberately scar ourselves, but a scar is part of your story. That's fine. Um, there might be a reason to be ashamed of a scar. And you can wrap that in, especially if it's if it's like you've been... I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'll, I'll build a backstory for you. But um, yeah, did you do something that you were ashamed of, something that was unvirtuous or unheroic that mm. resulted with that scar? Or does the scar have uncomfortable memories for you? Um, that is actually an interesting thing. And that can be... Um, 
that can be a hook to get you in the game. And when you're speaking with crows um, or scops, or scops are all about heroism and, and boosting those things. The crows are more focused on the virtue aspect. Um, you can use that a little bit. Feel free to lean into it. Just because something isn't explicitly included within the brief doesn't mean it's off brief. No. And sometimes picking an aspect and going, hmm, that's interesting. What happens if I explore it this slightly different way? Um, use that. It's it's a great way to start conversations, to build some game up. Um, yeah. But Mark's heading off. Uh, so see you later, Rolly. Hi, Thanks Rolly. for coming on. Um, so uh, Mad Hat says, I, I want to explore the others, but I love playing a uh, dumb brave warrior too much. Yeah, if you're enjoying yeah. it, mate, just run with it. Uh, Freyd is a Freyd is a person who has strayed from their scheme and done something very unwinter marky. Yeah, that's pretty and much that, nail on the head, really. Yeah, and it can be very personal. Um, it could be something that either brought shame from something else. It could be something where you swore an oath and you failed to uphold an oath. That can do it. So mm. it's very personal to you. What might have resulted in you being Freyd? Um, and again, if you're afraid and you want to be unafraid, speak to the crows. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, just, did anyone here go to the little mother's ball? Not for me. So, I did. Did you? Was it yes. good? It was very fun. Um, uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'd not been before. Um, and yeah, got to sing a song, uh, got to debut a new song uh, of Emma's, uh, which is really cool. Um, yeah, amazing venue. Really cool venue. Um, yeah, I drank way too much rosé wine. Uh, we got involved in some skullduggery. Excellent. Um, yeah, really good fun. Uh, Be the ball, do you see any maggots in the fi on the field? I didn't across, come across any when I was at Anvil. I, I um, hope he's talking about sleeping bags. <laughs> <laughs> So for um, those aren't aware, within Wintermark, um, a maggot is, I can be, someone might contest me on the, the actual definition, but a lot of the time, a, a good example of a maggot would be someone who um, is like uh, looted, looting from the battlefield when uh, they didn't participate in the battle. Um, generally, looting during a battle is trade up, frowned upon anyway, especially when the battle's still going on. Um, mm. But yeah, it's it's, you'll see people look at it with slightly different eyes but certainly taking things or earn rewards that you did not earn mm. is a good way of is one common theme of, of maggotry um yeah it is distinctly unheroic um and it's it takes a kind of a um a dedicated player to go down that route because you will be despised yeah. and if that's something if that's really you want to go down Go for it, but yeah, um, maggots are unpopular within Wintermark, and I think it would take some skill to do it well and not be miserable. So if you mm. if you want to do it, cool, but um, just be advised. The players will love it. Other players will go, awesome. Someone's playing a maggot. I can run with this from a yeah. role play side of things. But in character, yeah, it could be different. I definitely say don't do it for your first play, first character. No, no, definitely not. I've seen, I've seen people do it. I've seen, I've seen that, and I've, but I was in Navarre at the time, so I really yeah. didn't care. No, <laughs> other, I'd rather stuff was uh, put to use. Yeah, than, other nations operate very differently. Um, yeah, but it, it's winter markets are very, it's a very much yeah. a yeah. Please don't. Uh, Forlorn hope we've got a guy uh, we constantly call a maggot in our group. Excellent. Um, Joe, I did quite a bit of in, um, I did quite a bit of intrigue and missed out on the dancing, but thankfully I managed to catch my favourite song of yours. What's that? What's that one? Joe, uh, what did I do that night? Um, uh, freeborn do uh, do some quite maggoty behaviour. Well, they're freeborn. That's what they. That's the brief was. Yeah, it? yeah. It's I think it's, I, it's very different attitudes across different nations. Yeah, yeah. I th I thought that was very much in the freeborn brief. That sort of. That sort of thing, but I might I might be wrong. I might be wrong on that one. But um, so what? So people, uh, you brought up singing again. So what is your favourite song to perform? 
Ooh. It's going to be a, it'll be a two part question this one. So my favorite to perform, it's I guess it's tricky because there's some that I've had for a lot longer, um, and things like Sing for the Mark, which was the first one I ever did. It was the first full song I had on Empire, and that's great because despite the title, there's like only two words of singing in it. Um, and that's good fun because it's got massive audience participation and yeah. it's wonderful and it's probably the easiest of all ones to do for, for people to join in on. Nowhere I'd rather be is the one that I think is probably the most universally liked um, mm -hmm. because quite frankly I was being cheeky and I was deliberately trying to twist people's emotions. Um, I don't know what's my favourite. I honestly don't know. Um, I think it depends on the mood I'm in. I wreck my throat is. Yeah. Um, there's a couple that I've yet to do at Empire. Or there's one that I've tried three times to do at Empire and I've wrecked my voice every single time. Um, there's a new one I'm doing, which I think is going to be really fun. But yeah, I, I couldn't choose a single favorite. Yeah. It's it's entirely subjective and okay. it depends on the mood. Okay, so what's your what's the song that you want to sing a lot, but mood? Role play stuff like that dictates it's not really the time you can't really do this one at the moment so um yeah so there's a couple of filks that i'd like to do a bit more of um mm. uh ones that did um i think i did did one of them did i do um alter i uh, sorry um i want to tell a story did i do that for your stream of songs and stories last time it's tentate i can't remember it's a really nice song, and I think part of the yeah. part of the issue is that the, uh, all the songs that I've performed so far, they're these big, bombastic, upbeat ones. So when mm. when I'm like, oh, I'm going to sing a song, then people are like, yes, and they get in the mood for a big, bombastic one. There's a couple I've done, one in particular that I've never never performed at Empire, um, and it's my Vigilance song. So all my original songs were based on the Virtues, and it's mm. it's a really soft one with like a just a gentle beat to it. And it starts off really slowly, and it, it builds into something a bit bigger. But it's it's a lot softer than anything else I've ever done. Um, and I think I just haven't found the right context to do it. Um, but I, I really want to do that at some point. It's a nice, yeah. chilled out one. Um, yeah, with theme of vigilance, and it's. I think part of it with that because it's a bit of a. It's a bit of a tribute, both IC and OC, to a lot of the friends that I see at Empire mm. um, who struggle for various reasons, mental health, physical health. And it's, it's a bit of a subtle reference to a lot of that, and I've never had the opportunity to kind of do it there. That's a long-winded way of saying that one. Yeah, it's called that's... ICU. It's on the SoundCloud. <clears throat> Excellent. That's really cool. Okay, so which there's, a, there's some great, fantastic singers in that field. There's some absolutely incredible singers in that field. Which one would you say, I'll put you on the spot here. Oh, don't do this. Which one would you like to do it with the most? Ooh. That's hard. That is hard. Um, You're welcome. You know what? There's a bunch of different ones I'd like to do for different capacities. Um, so I'd love to do a collab with Rusty Compass just because they are hilarious. They're amazing. Their performance, their showmanship is brilliant. And I, I just think it would be really fun to do some kind of like Wintermark versus Verushka mashup type thing. It would be really, really cool. Mm. Um, uh, people like Gabby um, will be yeah. awesome. And I think I think one of the things that inspired me, especially um, with Gab, was an event I saw at the the League Theatre, one of the first big competitions I had at the League Theatre, and it was a Navarre performance troupe who won. And Gab was in it, Sam was in it, um, uh, Justin was in it. There was a whole load of, of Navarre performers were in this group, and that was amazing. And I had this great idea. In fact, okay, I'm going to go there. What I want to do is I want to do a full-on international collaboration, like international supergroup type thing. I would love to do that with representatives of every single nation performing one big, awesome, epic track. 
Um, I realize I'm dodging the question here, but I don't care. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'd love to do that, but yeah, it's 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 too hard because it all depends. I've got that type of song I'd love to do with someone like Gab. There's really fun, um, like celebratory th- songs I'd like to do with things like the there's a few of the Brass Coast performers who are amazing. Yeah. There's some scops in Wintermark who have just skills I, I can't come close to in terms of the storytelling and alliterative verse and things like that it just blows my mind because that's a skill I, I do not have I, I know where my skill set is it's you know it's fast clever lyrical stuff but these people who can weave these narrative stories out would be amazing um, but I, I just wouldn't know where to begin with those guys mm. so Duh. which singer would you like to duet with the most in that field oh you dick <laughs> Ah, oh, I'll put you on the spot. Go. Uh, okay, right, chat. Pick a song, and Andy can pick who he would like to duet with for that song. The first song that that comes up next. So get typing quickly. Do 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 do. Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so in terms, yeah, in terms of my own, it's come up with nowhere. Um, I'm trying to think with that. Because I've done that with some people. I think, I think the, the, the first person that comes to mind for, for me with that one is is Gab. Um, so Gabby, who plays Edwin, who hosts Song and Story Time. Um, I think because that song is so synonymous with song and story time for me. Yeah. Um, and she's, she's like peak bard around that side of things. And I think that'll be really nice. I think also, I'm not going to name individuals here because I think that would actually be mean in this case, but there's a number of people who I've spoken to in the field who want to get into the Scott side of things. Um, and a little bit nervous, a little bit unsure, and I would I would love to sing with those guys um, yeah. because that for me is really rewarding helping people get into that. And and there are certain individuals um, I, I, I'm not going to call them out because that, that would actually be mean in this case. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I know of at least three specific individuals who want to do more in that area, and I kind of like to to encourage them in there. No, that's yeah. fantastic. That's awesome. It's nice to see that. I mean, it's, it's always good to see I did, people encouraged. So I did that, one so. with um, uh, um, uh, Antonia, who plays um, uh, Kaylee. And mm. she was one to sing. And she, we ended up going into the song and story time. And we did, uh, I think we did Where Do You Stand? It's another one of mine. And she was singing it. She sang the whole thing. Um, and I was just stood in the middle playing guitar. And that was great be able to see another performer step up mm. um, and be able to help give them that leg up is brilliant that's awesome okay so what we'll do then because i mean we've been going for an hour and 40 so far well i'd say an hour and 30 because of the interesting at the beginning so what i'll do is i've got there's two questions that um i like uh, smith actually asked came up with one uh, when I did this chat with him, and it was something that's never really occurred to me before to ask people, but I think it's quite a nice uh, question. And the, and the last question that I always ask uh, actually comes from Helen's mum, <laughs> and it's a brilliant it's a brilliant question. So we'll go we'll go with the, the other one first. So if you had to pick right now, what nation apart from Wintermark would you go to right now? Right now, if I were to die tomorrow, and assuming my group weren't there. Yeah. Like if I were to go solo, because my group are fundamental to my LARP experience. Yes. If I were to go to one of the nation, it would be the Imperial Orcs. Yeah. Couple of reasons. First off, they have the coolest backstory. Um, I love the whole, you know, rebellion from slavery, the, the Spartacus references, all of that stuff. I think it's just really cool. I love their culture. Um, I also think it would be one of the easiest distancing wise because there's no risk of someone going, oh, it's Tarek, but wearing different clothes for some reason. 
be unrecognizable and to just have a complete fresh slate like that would mm. be really cool yeah um <laughs> dave has just said sorry that's the wrong answer the correct answer is navarre <laughs> <laughs> so fun story we um so we are our full title on the banner is the embers of ashen hall we originally weren't ashen hall we were ashenstead so before we joined the game we were going to be a navari group wow and I yeah. can see that. So I can see that. It was originally Ashenstead, and then just as we were putting together our brief and our design a little bit more, we realised kind of more towards Wintermark. So yeah, it was it was a close run thing. So the the last question that I'll I'll go with uh, you're going home in a March of grow bag. I love <laughs> I love that. Um, what? Well, the question that Helen's one came up with, and it was an interesting one, when I, when I did my very, very first one of these about a year or so ago um, with Kit, and the very first question, that, uh, the last question I asked him then, and I've asked, it's the last question I ask everybody, why do you LARP? You might recognise this question from earlier. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if... if... Having had this conversation over the last couple of hours, if, if my thinking has come any clearer, yeah, um, it's weird. I, I could flippantly just say because it's fun. Sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes it's hard work. Sometimes it's exhausting and pain and literally. Um, I don't think I could give one single reason. I think no. partly it's therapy of, of a form um, in that it takes me away from the world. Um, it's just distancing, it's playing, it's make-believe. All yeah. of my hobbies, to some degree or another, are make-believe. Pretending I'm someone else. I love it. I love pretending to be someone else. Um, which makes it sound like I utterly hate who I am. It's not the case, but it's... Um, I just like that. Um, also, I like... I mean, I, I love the works of things like Bernard Conwell, and you know, that's the type of fiction I read, the type of TV I watch, the films I watch, mm. it gives me the opportunity to step into that world yeah. for just a little while. Um, I think that's that's part of the broader reason. Um, and then, yeah, since Tarek, the, the, the music side of things, it is insanely gratifying I, in ways I never anticipated. I thought I'd turn up, sing a few poxy songs, and that'll be cool. And I keep calling it the Tarek thing because it kind of exploded. Tarek became his own weird thing. Um, but it's it, it's encouraged me to be more creative than I have been in years, and I wouldn't have had that no. if I hadn't been laughing. Yeah, it's it's amazing how so incredibly varied the answers to that question are. Yeah. So it's I think it's it's a nice regret and I think it shows how wonderful and broad our hobby is and yeah. Yeah, how accepting it is that it gets so many people from so many different walks of life who in life who need so many different things. It's it's incredible. You get all these beautiful bastards in chat who are there and they're just it's just chatting away and it LARP brings everybody together. I think it's yeah. it's just one of those it's one of those things. It was I remember doing Comic Con and I tried to I was trying to explain that to people who are watching when we when we were on the uh, one of the stages and we were being interviewed and there was like a hundred people I think it's like one hundred and twenty people who all sat down around us watching and it was trying to explain to them it's it's really corny but it's like one big family you can walk in that field. And you could be bawling your eyes out, and you'll have a hundred different people come up to you and ask if you're all right. Yeah, in character and out of character. At, at the risk of a of a corny plug, so the the new song that I've not done anyway yet, which I'm, I was planning on doing, that song some story time. Um, it, it's got a couple of lyrics in it. One of which is, um, uh, it's it's a, a welcome to the family I never thought I'd know, and uh, another one of the lines is, is welcome to the friends who were strangers yesterday, mm. and. And I think they kind of sum up that feeling for me. It's these people who I didn't know from Jack um, and I'm now really close to. I might see them four times a year. I might see them for a grand total of about half an hour four times a year. That and some of the friends who were friends previously, now they're family. 
they're the Ashen fan. You know, the, these these people are my family, um, and it's amazing, mm. truly amazing. It is, it is fantastic. I mean, if it wasn't for LARP, then I mean, I, I count myself very lucky with the people who I've met at LARP. I mean, like just yourself included, because five six years ago, I would not have imagined myself being doing anything like this, for example, no. and then just talking about it and just. And it, I think it's it's a fantastic thing that we all have, and uh, I look I look I really cannot wait for the day in a in a horribly sentimental thing. I I'm looking forward to seeing everyone in a field and hugging every single person because that is one of the big things I'm missing at the moment. Is yeah. there are there are going to be so many tears at the the next big there event really in the are. field? Yeah, there really tears. are. Um, I, I I can I can see for me I I can I can see my breakdown happening at four o'clock in the morning when I'm sat around a fire and I'm still drinking. <laughs> I love you, mate. <laughs> so, no hugs and horizon. Yeah, uh, I miss everyone so much. I'll miss my spooky Varushkin family. So it's it's a fantastic. It really is such a good yeah. thing. So I'm gonna call it there. I think we've done incredibly well and it's been a really nice chilled laid back chat and I think it's what's been needed and it's really really nice to sit down and chill yeah. with people and just and just chill out um, and generally st stuff like this so your chats um, the uh, James podcast it's, it's things like that that kind of even at the best of times like especially getting over the long dark things like that are hugely useful for keeping the king and keeping that social aspect going and Certainly, over the last few months, um, yeah, there's been stuff like this is, is what's keeping a lot of people going. I want to do, um, I want to start putting things out there so and people would say you can message me or, or anything and just say, mm. Oh, do a chat with this person, this person would be interesting, do one with this person, or do something about this. And like, uh, I want to do one with the priest, get a couple of people in the priestly, priestly game in involved um don't worry Liam, you did not annoy us at all mate you're fine uh kai's turned up at the end again <laughs> hey guy <laughs> well done mate <laughs> um but yeah i mean i i love to do do stuff like this so there, there's um my favorite quote from south park is there's no stupid questions just stupid people <laughs> um yeah and it stuck with me that one um yeah, probably doing a national chat and stuff like that. But um, I, I will say it again: if if people want to do the um, Amazon Prime thing, Prime thing, then I can I can start rolling it out, um, paying for people's tickets and stuff like that. And it doesn't cost you anything if you've got Amazon Prime. So um, it'll, I'll make it a big thing when that's all done. Prosperity. Oh my God! I've just realised who the Mad Hatter is now. Uh, Bador, <laughs> uh, Steel Storm. <laughs> uh, can't wait to take orders from either of you next time. I just wish I didn't have to pick them between um, Marika's Spear and Heart of the Mark. Yeah, yeah, two very different units. Two very very different units. But. Yeah, so thank you everyone for watching. <laughs> Andy, thank you so much for doing this, mate. I really, pleasure, really mate. appreciate Genuinely. it. It's been, it's been good great. fun. We'll... Feed, feeds the keen. Really, really does. Um, I will say this. One thing I want to do is I want to do one of these chats before an event and then immediately after just so that I can compare. So people can go, oh, they look full of keen, full of keen. What happened? And we can go, yeah, I really want to do this. I want to do all of this. And then you come out at the end of it and you're just there going, oh my God, I hurt. Get all the bruises, all the face paint over you <laughs> and everything. Twitching. Exactly. That's That will be um, that will be such a good laugh. Uh, Svan says <laughs> hi to, by the way. Hi. So, absolutely fantastic. So, thank you all for going. Uh, I'm going to aim to do another one, something like this, on uh, Sunday, I believe. No idea who we're with yet. I, uh, yeah, I'll get something sorted. Um, and we'll go from and we'll go from there. But uh, thank you all for coming, and we'll keep on going with it. And uh, Ben, thank you for the subscription on Twitch Prime. That's awesome. Thank you so much. 
Ben is actually a brand new player. He's wait for his first event. He's going off to join Dawn. So yeah, glory. so that's fun. Yeah, everyone works in the glory hole. <laughs> some, great, some great players in Dawn. Really, <laughs> really, really are. Yeah. So yeah, poor fella. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I am definitely going to end it there. So thank you all for watching. We'll see you all soon. Uh, Take care and uh, see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks, Dave. See you later, guys.